Lab 8, Designing a Hand Warmer. Here are the materials that you will need for this experiment. So first we need to determine the calorimeter constant, which is the amount of heat that is absorbed by the calorimeter itself when a process goes on inside. So I'm gonna begin by measuring out 100 milliliters of cold water and the density of water is one gram per milliliter, so I have 100 grams of my cold water. So I'm just going to adjust my volume here so that the bottom of my meniscus is resting on the 100 milliliter mark. And I need to know the starting temperature of my water. So now I'm going to pour out a 100 milliliter sample of hot water. I'm going to go ahead and adjust that volume to be exactly 100 milliliters. So now that I've measured out my hot water and my cold water, what I need to do is know their initial starting temperature for both. So I have the thermometers here so I can record that temperature. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to combine these solutions in my calorimeter. So first I'm going to just add my cold water to the calorimeter. And I want to note that initial temperature here. So next I'm going to take the probe here and place it in my calorimeter. And I'm going to uh, add this hot water while I mix with the uh, temperature probe here so that I can get the final temperature of the hot and cold water mixed together. So right now I'm recording the temperature of the cold water using my probe and I'm going to press collect here so it will start collecting data. So I'm starting at my cold temperature and adding this hot water. And as I add the hot water, you see that the temperature starts to climb really quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that my water is um, well mixed, that they're both coming to the same temperature here. And basically I just want to wait until my temperature stops changing, until it becomes constant again. So we can see on the graph there that it's starting to get that sort of flat pl plateau, which is indicating to me that the temperature is remaining constant. So I have my final temperature of the water of them mixed together. So I'm gonna use this data to determine the difference in heat exchange uh, between the hot and cold water. And that difference is gonna be due to heat absorbed by the calorimeter. So that will help us to determine our calorimeter constant. Next, we need to find the heat of solution. So I'm gonna begin by measuring out around uh, five grams of solid here. So I'm gonna measure this out for sodium chloride. And it's not really important that it's 5.00 or that it's exactly on whatever number I'm aiming for. Uh, all that matters is that I know the mass. I need to know how many moles of this solid are dissolving in my water. So I'll take the heat exchange and divide by the moles of this solid and it'll give me the heat per mole. So I've measured out my solid and recorded the mass that I'm starting with here. And next I'm going to want to measure out uh, some distilled water. So I think I used 100 milliliters here. Uh, in your experimental data, it's 45 milliliters. But the idea is I need to know how much water, the starting temperature of the water, how much of my salt, and the final temperature upon mixing. So here I'm just adjusting my volume to get it to 100 milliliters exactly. Again, in your data set, I believe it's 45 milliliters.
So I'm going to take my distilled water here and pour it into my calorimeter. I've grabbed a beaker to put it in just to kind of stabilize it so it doesn't fall over. So I'm going to add this water. And then I'm going to want to start collecting temperature data. So I'll know the initial temperature of the water. So just stirring, making sure uh, everything's come to the same temperature there and start collecting data. So we can see what our starting temperature of the water is. So now what I want to do is add this solid. So I'm going to add this in and we want to make sure that it all dissolves. So we're going to stir just to make sure all of that solid dissolves in that water. So here we see that whenever we add this uh, sodium chloride that the temperature decreases. And that's because this process is absorbing heat. The process of dissolving is absorbing heat away from the water, which makes the water temperature go down. So we want to make sure that this is all completely dissolved in there and that we're getting the heat change for the total mass of solid. So we would repeat this procedure here for each solid. There are six total. I am only showing you the one solid, but it's the same procedure where we need to determine what the temperature changes upon the addition to water. So we can see from our data here, the temperature went down a little bit. Now remember to use the data provided with the assignment, disregard the values that are in this video.